kick off this review, we are going to go a little more in depth, starting with the externals of this gun. The gun's body is constructed with real wood. However, the barrel, gas tube, and receiver are made of metal. Also included on the gun are the adjustable iron sights, safety switch, front and rear sling mounts, bayonet lug, and stacking swivel. The stacking swivel is a neat, historically accurate feature and was used to connect three M1 Garand rifles together to form a TP when not in use. This helps keep dirt off the rifle. The M1 also features a working bolt that reveals the hop-up adjustment knob when in the open position. Next up, we're going to talk about what's on the inside. The disassembly process is pretty straightforward and simple to get access to the gearbox. The gearbox is a custom version, hybrid 6mm, 8mm metal bearing gearbox design with steel gears. However, the gearbox itself operates almost identical to an M14 gearbox. The barrel length is 610 millimeters. I left my gearbox stock, but it is fully upgradable with Tokyo Marui style internal parts. Another very important note on the gearbox is that it comes with a MOSFET pre-installed right out of the box. The battery compartment is located inside the butt plate of the stock. The gun comes wired to a small type Tamiya connector. I use a 9.6 volt standard small type battery and it fits inside with plenty of room. Now we are going to compare the factory FPS results with some tests of our own. We will be using evike.com's factory results of 380 FPS to 400 FPS with 0.20 gram BBs. Here are our own results. Next, we are going to talk about the current state of the gun and my personal preferences with it. The M1 Garand rifle design is over 80 years old and does not feature rails or attachment options that modern weapons are designed with. Therefore, the Airsoft version does not accept scopes or rails without personal bonification. I fitted my Garand with a period correct M1907 leather sling and a rubber M1 bayonet replica although I had to modify the bayonet as it will not properly fit on the ICS M1 Garand. The ICS M1 Garand performs well and is best suited for medium range encounters in an outdoor field setting. I have owned my Garand for over three years and the gun has held up very well. It is pretty durable, surviving several drops and aggressive use. The wood does a good job keeping dirt out of the internals. However, the wood stain will start to wear away around the areas where you grip it. In my opinion, I think it gives the gun a nice look. Another note is that the wood will dent from BB impacts if struck. Some strengths about the M1 are its unique look as I always receive compliments from other players at events, the range and accuracy out of the box are also impressive, and finally personally gripping the gun feels comfortable and natural to me. Some of the downsides about the ICS M1 Garand are, it is semi-automatic only, the magazine capacity is pretty low at 40 shots on average, and the mags are proprietary. With the semi-automatic fire and low ammo capacity, you really have to be smart when choosing your combat encounters as you will be outmatched very often. I enjoy these odds though as it takes more discipline and makes gunfights more interesting by providing a different style of play. The last downside is the lack of rail space. But most people when looking at this gun are going to realize that you are not going to be able to put on all sorts of grips, lasers, and optics on the Garand. 